you've ever heard of anyone talking about a uh, Volvo estate, they, they nearly always say, oh, they're built like a tank. You know what, they're not, they're not really wrong. The way this car's designed with its absolutely massive thick doors and chunky solid looking design, it is quite tank-like. But what a Volvo estate car has never been able to do, like a tank, is go off-road. Come off the main road and cross the country any way it sees fit. This XC70 is much more close to a, uh, a tank than any Volvo estate has been before. Welcome to the Volvo XC70, which is essentially a Volvo V70 estate car, third generation in this case, raised up off the ground with some extra cladding and things like metal sump guards underneath. It's designed to go cross country, hence the XC name, and most of them are four wheel drive. Because they've put this car on stilts, what it means is that not only can you uh, clear all the sort of rocks and bits and things when you're going off road, the suspension travel means that this car on the road is incredibly comfortable. It soaks up all the potholes because the, the suspension's doing its job. It's got so much uh, room to work with. Basically, glide over anything that the uh, UK roads have to offer. Now, in addition to that, you've got the classic Volvo interior, these ridiculously plush seats. It's pretty much a cliche now to talk about Volvo seats and go on about how comfortable they are, but there's a reason for it. There really are no other seats in the, in the car industry that are as padded and armchair-like as the seats in a Volvo. The rest of this interior is just a lesson in Swedish minimalism and simple design. It's really nice. So what the XC70 does is it cossets you. It removes you from the external world as best it can with a little wind or road noise and relaxing driving manner. You know, the, the steering is not heavy, the clutch is not heavy, the gearbox is easy to use a look around for something that would uh, explain the 74mm ride height increase. The closest to that size I could find was this. This is about 78mm. So if you can imagine that the car is this much higher up off the ground than the standard V70, then it'll give you an idea of how much extra space you've got underneath. Cheers. Most of the cars sold in Europe and the UK were diesels, of course. This is a D5, so it's the top of the line diesel with 215 horsepower. Now the D3 was a four cylinder with 160 horsepower. Then you had the D4 somewhere in between with 180. And the way the D5 accelerates, you put your foot down and the next thing you know when you look at the speedo, you're doing speeds that you shouldn't be doing. So you do have to be careful with it. Uh, the 0-60 is 7.7 seconds, which is hot hatch territory. But of course, it doesn't feel like a hot hatch. You don't really realize the sort of speed you're doing until you look down at the speedometer. They sold this third generation XC70 from 2007 through till 2016. So it was on the roads for quite a long time and they did facelift it halfway through. In 2012, they changed the interior. So you no longer had the pop-up sat-nav You've got the built-in Census infotainment system that this car has, with this car being a 2013 model. The Census infotainment system, it's nice to use, it looks nice. I don't particularly like how you have to control it on the centre console rather than down by where your arm would naturally rest. And it's not touchscreen, which is fine by me, but it, it certainly has some really nice graphics and everything seems to be controlled through it. So if you put the heated seats on, for example, there's no light on the button itself. It just comes up on the screen instead. And the same for all the other climate control and, and settings and so on. The four wheel drive system in the XC70 is a Haldex system. What the four wheel drive system does is most of the time it, it's in front wheel drive. When it detects that it needs it, if the wheels start slipping or it needs extra grip, it will engage the rear wheels as well and give you uh, that four wheel drive. This car was also available with hill descent control, which I've always thought of as a proper Land Rover style feature. So it'll help you get down a hill without running away and rolling off. You do have to be aware that some of the XC70 models were front wheel drive only, but not many. It was really the Drive E models, which were eco-minded. Driving around town is uh, nice and easy. It's a big beast, so you obviously have to be careful of the length, but the reversing camera helps you with that. But the visibility is really good because you've got glass all the way down the car and quite narrow pillars at the end, so it's really not too bad. If you're in the market for an XC70, something you might be considering doing with it is towing, towing a caravan or a trailer or something. You'll be pleased to hear that it's absolutely brilliant for towing. The owner, Tony Blount, he uses it to tow a caravan. With the D5 version, the torque is, is uh, so immense that you, you don't know it's there. What I like about the design of this car is it, it kind of blends in anywhere. It's a sophisticated looking car for 
sophisticated people, I think. You could park this outside a, a country mansion and no one would think twice, but at the same time, you could park it outside your house in the inner, inner city as well and it would be fine. So it's just got that very chunky, classic shape that Volvo have always managed to do so well. Hi, if you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button. And if you have an XC70, comment below and let me know what you think. So what's it like to drive on twisty roads and stuff? Well, obviously it's not a driver's car. It's quick. It accelerates ridiculous. It's still just doing that thing where it's separating me from the road and, and obviously that just means that you're not going to get any feedback or anything. But if you're buying this car, you're not, you're not interested in that. Of course, with it being a Volvo, the safety features are excellent. It's got a five-star Euro NCAP rating, as you'd expect. You've got these like anti-whiplash seats, incredibly tough side impact protection in the doors. This is the SE Lux model and it's got all sorts of fancy kit on it. A particular favourite of mine is the power folding tailgate when you just close it and open it with a button press. You've also got obviously like memory seats and heated leather and sat nav and lots of nice things like that. Although most of the time the D5 does sound quite dieselly, when it's getting up to like sort of 3000 RPM, it sounds quite nice actually. It's got this quite nice uh, thrum that you would get from uh, the five cylinder design. If the power of the D5 is not enough for you, then they did do a uh, T6 petrol engine with 300 brake horsepower, which is kind of mental for this car, to be honest. I'm, I'm not sure what you would need all that power for, but the option was there if you need it. I do like this interior, but the only thing that I'm not really enjoying is the fact that when I lean my knee on this center console, can you hear that? Very creaky. On the motorway, the Acceleration's effortless. It's uh, incredibly relaxing to uh, just soak up the miles. You could do a huge distance in this car. MPG-wise, uh, this D5 is getting about 35 average. That's with all different kinds of drive in town and motorway and everything. It's officially 53 MPG, but you, you, I'm sure you could get, you know, like 40s with it, which is good given the, the performance and the weight of this car. So what front interior practicality? You've got these two cup holders, a pretty big cubby in the center console, decent sized glove box and then some quite small door pockets but that's about it no sunglasses holder or or any other sort of interesting bits of storage that I can see. Reliability wise they're actually pretty good they're solidly built cars and they're quite dependable but of course once something does go wrong expect like larger bills because it is a luxury car and the parts are a bit more expensive they can do massive miles in that traditional Volvo way they are well made and robust. It's now time to find out what it's like in the back of the Volvo XC70, and for that I have my colleague backseat JJ. Yeah, no worries mate, happy, happy to help as always. What's it like back there mate? It's, it's good back here. As you would expect from a Volvo estate car, there is plenty of room. It's set for JJ in front of me, he's six foot tall, I'm six foot tall. We're sat behind each other fine. I've got headroom. Oh mate, can I have some of that? Cheers man. Oh. Back here, creature comforts, little light up here on each side, so there's two of them. Uh, you've also got ventilation coming from the front. There's a 12 volt socket down here. Some small, tiny pockets on the doors. An armrest that's got cup holders built into it. You can fold them out, which is good. And of course the seats fold flat, 40, 20, 40, and there's no load lip. So it's a really good big, big square space for whatever you need back there. You've got this dog guard that you can fold down. I imagine that was an option. Pull out the parcel shelf all the way to the back. And there's some underfloor storage as well. There's a third 12 volt socket um, in the back as well. So you've got three all together. Oh, you finished. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, all right, cheers, mate. So that's the Volvo XC70. It's a practical, reliable, robust, comfortable, car that you could soak up the miles in whilst carrying an absolute load of stuff in the back uh, and you could just take it off road and go uh, go wherever you want in it so there's a lot to like about this car one of the competitors to this car was the Subaru Legacy slash Legacy Outback I did a review on the Legacy that's going to be up there yeah just thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video